Today is the 6th of November, the overload, 2023, the 22nd Sunday after Trinity. We'll hear a message on the evidence of obedience during when we harvest, receive Holy Communion, and be empowered in the Lord. The Lord be with you. So we now pray. You may sit on it and pray together. Almighty God, our hearts open before you, and there's nothing we can hide from you. Breathe your Holy Spirit into our hearts and cleanse our thoughts so that we may truly love you. And what we praise your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The summer of the law, our Lord Jesus Christ said, You shall love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than this. And we always say, Lord, have mercy on us and write these laws in our hearts. A moment of silence. Each of us take a moment of total silence and present your petitions to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers, and we say, and let our cries come unto you. Together, we pray, confessing to Almighty God, stating and confessing that Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, great and judge of all, we confess that we have sinned against you in many ways, in what we have thought, in what we have said and done. And what we have failed to do, we are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. 
Forgive us, O Father, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Strengthen us that we may serve and please in a new life. To live to your honor and glory through Jesus Christ, our Lord. May the Almighty God, who our Heavenly Father, who has promised forgiveness to all repent and turn back to him, now forgive you and free from all your sins. May he renew and strengthen you to follow what is good and preserve you in eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. The collect of today, today is the 22nd Sunday after Trinity. The collect is on page two. Together we pray. Almighty and everlasting God, we offer you our heartless thanks for your fatherly goodness and care in giving us the fruits of the earth in their seasons. Give us grace to use them rightly, to your glory, for your, our own well-being, and for the relief of those in need, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen, amen, amen. The memory verse. Ah, leader. I'm the leader in the memory verse. Our memory verse is from First Chronicles chapter twenty-nine, verse nine. First Chronicles chapter twenty-nine, verse nine. Now order of service booklet. The people rejoiced at the willing response of their leaders, for they had given freely and wholeheartedly to the Lord. First Chronicles chapter twenty-nine. Verse 9. Amen. May I invite the children to come and we pray for you. Uh, sing for them as they come. Children, once you are below age 12, you are a child. Please come forward. Once you are below age 12. And you come when you are a child. Don't come like an adult. You come when you are a child. Jesus loves me. Jesus oh, loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me, 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 Jesus loves me. family anthem. Uh, Amza is the captain to lead, so I'm the leader. I think.
going to pray for these children. Uh, when you grow up, you want to become what? A basketball. A basketball. Uh-huh. For you, you want to become what? When you grow up like me. A teacher. A teacher. <laughs> and finally, you? A president. A president. <laughs> <laughs> now we pray. Lord, receive these children here gathered. We have just sampled a few of the ambitions to which you know you are at the center. We now pray that they may be fulfilled in every form, in every angle, in every way, and that the devil will not frustrate any of them. We pray that they will grow up because these children are the pillars of your church. And as we normally say, a forest without younger trees will soon be, will soon be exit. So their presence and their coming here we look for that important leaders, physicians, teachers, doctors, all the talents that be used for Uganda and Buna and your church will be nurtured and matured here and harnessed here. Bless them, bless their teachers now who are going to teach them that they may grow. Bless their parents that will support them. And bless my God the Father. And of the Son of the Holy Spirit be with you now and always. Amen. Now, follow your teacher is there waiting for you. The teacher is waiting for you. welcome. Amen. Amen. So let me request if you can rise up. Please feel free to rise up as we praise and adore and worship the King of Kings. Amen. Amen. So I want us to shout a very loud hallelujah to the King of Kings. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> for here. Eh? One, one, one. Amen. I'm talking about the great I am. I'm talking about Jesus as Savior. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Okay, now to some of us who are not yet sure, eh? I'm talking about this God that changed the report eh, about your life. Even when you're on that deathbed and the doctor said you only have one second and this God came through for you. Amen. The Lord that has given us the life that we are living now, this is the God that I'm talking about. Amen. So I want us to release our souls. Amen. Amen. The Spirit of God is in this place. Hallelujah. Because we are in the presence of God and everything is possible. Amen. So I want us to shout a very big hallelujah to the King of Kings. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is worthy. Amen. 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 So I want you to repeat after. I have come, I have come to give back to you. I have come to say thank you, Lord. To say thank you, Lord. Then take all the praise. Take all the praise. You deserve it. You deserve it. I have come to lift up my hands. I have come to say thank you, Lord. Take all the praise. Take all the praise. You deserve it. I have come to give you a shout. I have come to say thank you, Lord. Take all the praise. 
praise. Take all the praise. Take all the praise. You deserve it. Amen. Our God deserves the praise. He deserves the worship. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's just slap our hands.
somebody, amen. The Lord has given us victory, amen. Amen. Come on, let me just see you celebrating the house of the Lord. King of Kings. I 
said lower. lower. I said lower. lower in the name of Jesus. Lower. I declare it lower. lower. That sickness. Oh. Lower. lower, 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 lower. Lower, lower, lower. lower. Higher, higher, higher. Jesus, higher, higher. Lift Jesus, higher. Lift Jesus, higher. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. You do what yes, you do what. 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 Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord has given us victory. Hallelujah. Amen. Who lifts up the name of Jesus Amen. higher and higher. Hallelujah. The Lord has been good. The Lord has preserved us. Amen. 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 The Lord has been gracious to some of us. Hallelujah. Amen. When you see me dancing and celebrating, Amen. I was a Muslim, so I have a reason Amen. to praise. The King of Kings, hallelujah. Amen. The Lord saved me, amen. amen. The Lord saved me, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe also you have a reason amen. to praise and adore the King of Kings, hallelujah. Amen. He is worthy, amen. Some of us here are over 70 years, hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. You can see mommy is there, hallelujah. Amen. We thank God for her life. Amen. 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 Even they said you not make it well in November. And I want to assure you that we shall cross into 2024. In the name of Jesus. And whose report shall we believe? We shall believe the report of who? Of the Lord God. Amen. 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 He is worthy. Hallelujah. Just raise up your voice. We have to declare that Holy Katonda, Holy Katonda, be on call again. We need sa. Teri alinga gwe, teri akwe nkana. Holy Katonda, man agwe nega. Holy wachiti, bova demansi bambula mbafe. You have been kind. You have been gracious, King of Glory. And Lord, we declare your power in the name of Jesus.
raise up your voice and lift them unto the Lord, that God who reigns. He reigns over every situation. He reigns over every challenges, everything that mocks you, that puts you down. Just lift them to the Lord. That God who never fails us will never fail you. That God who has been with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in the fire, that God will restore you. That God 
God who never fails us, the God who remembered Daniel in the pit of the den of lions. May that God remember you this day. Just speak to the Lord and say, God, remember me this month in the name of Jesus. Remember me. Remember my torture. Remember everything that had been against me. Remember, O oh Lord. And God assign your angels to come and minister in my life. Just ask the Lord to assign the angels to minister in your life, minister in your spirit, in the name of Jesus. We pray that our God Almighty minister to our souls, minister to our spirits, minister to our bodies, in the name of Jesus. Lord Almighty, minister to somebody, minister to us, O oh God, my master, this day, O oh God Almighty. There are those who need healing ministry, O oh God. My Lord, minister healing to them. Minister healing to them. My God and our Father, we are speaking that God. There are those who are heart wounded. We pray that you minister, O oh God, into their hearts, O oh God, this day. In the name of Jesus. Oh yes, my God, we are speaking, O oh God, my Master, to you, O oh Lord. Because you are God and you have never failed. You will never fail us, O oh God. You are above all the situation, above all the circumstances, oh God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I came across the scripture this day in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 4. And in verse number 13, he says that, I believed and therefore I spoke. And therefore because we are in the same spirit, we believe and therefore we speak. Therefore, I want you to think of something that you speak out this day. That thing that you have been through, that you need the Lord to deliver you upon. Speak it out because our God has given us authority through the words that we declare. He said that whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever we lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Therefore, I want you to go ahead and bind everything, everything that had been stressing you, those things that had been stressing you in the name of Jesus. May they be bound in the name of Jesus. Every evil forces, every demonic attack, demonic spirit that comes against you in the night, those spirits of dream that ties you and bound you in the name of Jesus. We pray that the Lord should bind them in Jesus' mighty name. The spirit of limitation. I want you to pray against them that the Lord will bind them in the name of Jesus. We pray against every gate that had been blocked for you. May the Lord release our open door. God, open our doors this day. Open our doors. Open our doors. Open our doors, oh God, King of glory. In the name of Jesus, I pray that whatever wanted to block our doors, oh God, may you, oh God, my master, come and move in the name of Jesus. In this month that starts with no, may the Lord declare every powers of darkness that had been causing evil forces against you. May there be a no. No failure in the name of Jesus. Somebody just raise your voice and declare something that it will not happen in the name of Jesus. That there will be no torture. There will be no failure. There will be no disappointment in the name of Jesus. Lord, I declare, no, nothing shall not happen against me because we serve the living God. Father, we bless you this day, O oh God. We bless you, O oh God. We spend I talk to you, O oh Lord. I surrender all to you. Everything I to you. With all in nothing. With all. Self to the Lord. Withholding nothing. Release everything to the Lord. Withholding nothing. Every pain to the Lord. I surrender. Surrender. I surrender. I surrender to the Lord. Lord, we surrender all to you, O God, this day. We surrender every pain to you. We surrender all that 
touches us. We surrender every heart burn, O God. We surrender what disappoints us to you, O God. We surrender, we surrender, we surrender, we surrender. Oh God, we surrender. Lord, I'm here with you. You know, you see. his name we pray and believe. good and that is data. Wow. Amen. Glory be to God. I don't know whether this morning the Lord uh, gave us the simple gift of disorganizing our comfort zones. Eh? The simple gift of disorganizing our comfort zones. There are many places next to us here which are empty. So kindly I'm requesting those who are far away from all the ends of the church to draw closer. And today is the Holy Communion service. And if there is a prayer we say, uh, to the introduction of Pastor, we say, draw near with faith. Eh? Draw near with faith and take this sacrament. Now we are saying, draw near with faith that even that position where you are going to sit from your usual place will be comfortable for you. Hallelujah. So draw near with, please come, please come. Eh? I know we are Anglicans and we are identified by our seats. Eh? Yes, we are identified by our seats. So you, you change next Sunday or when we meet in the course of the week, we will say, but we did not see you. Eh, you didn't attend and you will say, no, I attended only, I changed the place eh, where I sit. So. Please, friends, you are still at the periphery. That side, you, I hope everybody is looking at me. Make sure you see my face as I see your face. Please draw closer, draw closer. We know the day has been so cold since morning. Draw closer, friends. There are brethren in the other corner. There are brethren in that corner. I wish I knew your names, uh, but it would not be good even if I knew it and I mentioned it. May the Spirit draw you closer to us this side. Hallelujah. As those people draw closer, please draw closer. Even friends this side, there are many. Please come, come. I am blessed to see a neighbor to these people here. Please, please move. The sisters and brothers who are there, please move. Fellowship will be warmer when we are closer to each other. Hallelujah. Now I can comfortably ask you to welcome your neighbor. You say, neighbor, you are welcome. Glad to see you. I'm happy that you are my neighbor. Hallelujah. Tell them, please, don't look for me from here because I've moved here for today. Amen. Tell them, don't look for me from here next Sunday because I've moved here for only today. Amen. But you can tell them you are permanent seat. Praise the Lord. Don't you think God is good? 
Hallelujah. So we welcome you. Thank you for coming. We praise the Lord for this new month. Last month we were handling health and wholeness, and the Lord has did us well. We handled it in, at least we had a snippet of every aspect of health and wholeness. In the services and the midweek services, and this week we'll be crowning, uh, looking at trauma healing. This week we'll be crowning, this Wednesday. And then last Sunday we had the people teaching us about clean cooking, clean cooking. And so we praise the Lord. Now, whatever challenged you last month, it's better you speak to it and say, the Lord who challenges every challenge will challenge you in this new month. Amen? Yes, the Lord challenges every challenge that we go through. So that challenge, don't allow it to put you down. The Lord says, I am doing a new thing. Don't you perceive it? Hallelujah. And to the new month, and this month is for harvest. Harvest, hallelujah. As Church of Uganda, or Protestant, we have three important feasts that we cannot go through the year without celebrating. One is Christmas. That is the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. And as I speak, right now, people are in the midst of Christmas. Some people are in Christmas. Even their minds have already reached where they are going to celebrate Christmas from. Hallelujah. But tell your neighbor, we are still in November. <laughs> Christmas season is coming. Amen. So the next feast is the resurrection. Birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. We celebrate the Redeemer, the coming of our Redeemer, Jesus Christ. Now, Easter, we celebrate our redemption when Jesus marked victory over sin, victory over the devil, victory over death. So now, Easter comes. And I mean, I mean uh, harvest. Harvest comes in as the third feast that we celebrate. And the third feast, which is harvest, we celebrate the goodness of the Lord. We give thanks to the Lord for whatever he is to us and for whatever he has done for us and for what he's yet to do for us. That's why our guiding scripture for this will be Deuteronomy 26, verse 2 and verse 4. Just quickly, I'm not preaching. I'm just laying a foundation for us to understand the importance of this month. Let me just read there. Deuteronomy 26, verses 2 and 4. Verse 2 says, you shall take some of the first of all. <laughs> and all is all. The first fruit of all the fruit of the ground which you harvest from your land that the Lord, your God, is giving you. And you shall put it in a basket and you shall go to the place the Lord, your God, will choose to make his name dwell there. And this is for his sanctuary. So we are, we are hoping that you will choose from the fruit, other versions is to say the fruit of your labor. So from the fruit of all your fruit, the fruit of all the land that it has produced. And you put it in the basket, you will bring it to the place that he has chosen. <laughs> Hallelujah. So this season is supposed to be the richest season for the church. Whenever harvest comes, it's supposed to be the richest season for the church. And actually, upcountry churches and other churches use harvest to clear off every debt. Every debt. And even proceed with the projects the church is doing. Why? Because of every fruit we pick and brought to the church, to the Lord. I have good friends I was telling the second service. Whenever they stand up to speak at a function, at the end of their speech, they say, 
na kuherezente na kuherezembuzi eh na kuherezente na kuherezaki embuzi and yesterday was at some function so people were speaking they were kuherezente they were kuherezente and the bagole were just comfortable seated so people who don't know that is heaven the language it means i have given you a cow or i have given you a goat it is a culture it is their culture eh? and practice of their culture so at this function when they were giving cows and goats bagole were comfortably seated so there came some old man and cut off wires like they used to say they say bantumwe bantumwe went to the bagole and said bantumwe baba herezente nemsigahanga mus nemsigaham sitame musitame ente ente and so he didn't give them a cow he gave to the father so he went to the father and said mzee na kuherezente and mzee ran to receive the what tell your neighbor at this harvest we are hoping cows to be fed we are believing god the cows will be where will be pulled here and the goats will be pulled here he good number of us have farms eh the bible says if you don't bring it go and sell and bring the money and when it, uh, you say please don't be like anani and sasira eh? you bring all whatever you have sold and then what will you do verse 4 says can i go to verse 4 it says then the priest take the basket from your hand and set it down on the altar of the lord your god on that day dear friends the weddings will be rendered jobless the work will be ours the priests so we shall stand here all of us and receive and we shall lay them before the altar the uganda bible says so no bi uba uba masoga altar na bi na bi ranga bi kubo olokolo mulimo gwa mukama I wish you a blessed harvest season as we start and that we will harvest a blessing and not a curse. Therefore join me in welcoming our preacher the Reverend Canon Canon Kitio. You are warmly welcome Canon. Canon is part of the reserved force of the Anglican Church and the time he joined with the By the time he joined the reserved force he was serving as the dean of St Paul's Cathedral Namirembe. Canon you are warmly welcome. Canon is a teacher of the word. He served. He loves the Lord, he loves the ministry. That's why he is not tired of doing his the work that the Lord has given him to do. And uh, the other thing that I know about him is a very fast man. His speed is above his age. Eh? And he has come with one of our, our brother Israel Musigwa. Thank you for coming to be with us. And Israel is part of you. It's part of us here. Eh? Those of you who have been here for some time you must be knowing him. Those of you who have been in the choir for some time you must be knowing him. I thought he was a visitor and he said no I was not a visitor I've been here I was here Canon Reverend Serengeti found me here uh, Canon Bakunda found me here and uh, Canon Gabo also got me here so he's welcome home Hallelujah ancient words as Canon comes <laughs>
says, holy words long preserved for our walk in this world. The very sound was God's own heart. Only the ancient words can tell us. Let us pray. Our loving Father, we stand before you in holiness that the Holy Spirit inspired us as we look to your word as we prepare for this festival of harvest in this church, in this month. Through Jesus Christ. Amen. I would like to thank God through Reverend Kalagala and his team who invited me to come this month be with you as we prepare ourselves for the harvest festival. I prepared a few notes my, for you to follow and also me to follow as we go through his teaching. In every teaching, there will be some notes given. I'd like to begin by saying something simple. That whenever whenever somebody is preparing an activity or an event, the first prepared. There is no event prepared by human beings which is not prepared, which goes well. Some of you are prepared for wedding, for baptism, confirmation, graduation, you can name, name, name. For all those activities, you prepare. You call your friends. You have programs. 
You have a budget. What you want to cover? What you want to eat? What you want to enjoy? Because you are preparing for a very important thing to, to do what? To do better. To be to, for the to be careful. To make comfortable. To enjoy what you are preparing. If we prepare for all five things, what about the heavenly things? The things of God. We need to prepare more and more because we belong to God. In my introduction, three main points I want you to know as we go ahead in this. Because the theme of today is evidence of obedience. What shows that we are obedient? What will show that we are obedient to God. That's the theme given to us on this Sunday. But as we go through that theme to understand this, I want you to understand these three important points of my introduction. <coughs> Number one, man's main obligation is to be obedient to God's command. That is you. Your main purpose is to obey God to understand his will and obey him if you are a child of God. Two, obedient comes when one understands the commander. You cannot obey someone you despise. You cannot obey someone you think you are above him. You cannot obey someone you don't understand. You obey someone you understand. You obey someone you love. You obey someone you think is, be is beneficial in your life. And in our life, God is our commander. If God is our commander and we don't despise him, then we have to obey his command. Three, how do we know God? We know God by his attributes. His intrinsic nature or inherent characteristics. He's omnipresent. He's omniscient. He's omnipotent. We can name his lightning, his merciful, so many attributes of God. And we are going to use some of them. But as we prepare for this harvest, in this sermon today, we are going to learn or to remind ourselves who God is. God. And I'm going, to, I'm going to use a full illustration from the Bible to explain how God wanted certain people to understand him. Because God, you cannot understand God unless he reveals himself to you. Because we don't create, we not create God. God created them. Therefore, he is, he is that, he is, very, he is out of after all. Therefore, to know him, he must reveal himself to us. Let us begin this illustration. I begin with Adam and Eve, our first parents. How did God want Adam and Eve to understand him? God wanted them to understand him as the provider of their needs. That's why in Genesis chapter 1, verse 29, this is quotation from New King James Version, and we have Living Standard here, another version. But this one initially quoted is from the New King James Version. It says, Genesis chapter 1, verse 29 says, When God was telling Adam, see, that's the key word, see, see. Therefore, this earth and all that is has given you. Needs feed to you, it shall be food. That is the food that God gives us. This is the food basket He's given me here. This is the food basket from the ground, from what I have created, from what you have named, because Adam named the, all the fruitful trees. From what you have named, this I have given you. Do you know that God has given us 
to the gospel in every part of the world. And if you come to Uganda, our, the part of Africa, God has given us food ba baskets all over the country. I was telling some people that in Uganda here, you can eat different type of food or vegetables for the whole week if you want. Is that, is that a picnic? You can see Monday, next time you see Matoke, then you can roll, then you name them the type of thing we have in Uganda. You can eat for the whole week without a picnic. That's the basket that God gave us. How are we going to thank God for the basket of food, for the basket of vegetables, for the basket of weather, trees, everything? Then he said, Adam, come and be together. Secondly, God wanted Adam to see that it is he, God, who knows the best for man. That's why in, in John chapter 2, verse 18, he told the Christian Eve, the wife, Adam was wandering in the, in the field, looking for animals and insects. And God said to him, it is not good for man to be alone. To be alone. I will make him a helper comparable to him. It is God who said, it is not good. It is God who said it. Let me call you my son. You are going to be strong. God said it's not for you. But it's only God who knows what is good for you. But it's only God. My book, it's only him. God who knows the best for you. That's, if you trust God who knows the best for you, he provided the best for you. Has he provided for Adam? Because he knew the best. Number two, to Cain and Abel, the second generation, the children of Adam and Eve. If you open chapter four of Genesis, there's a story of the first harvest of the family of Adam and Eve. It was not in the church, it was at the home. Because God first dwelt in the home. And God begins now home, not in the church. So if you don't have God at home, you are, it's a mistake. God begins where? Home, then you come to the church. Now, this is the family of Adam and Eve. Chapter 4 of Genesis. This is what it reads. New King James Version. It says, Now Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived, and Boa came, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. Then she bore again, this time, his brother Abel. Now Abel was a keeper of sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. These two children are different professions. One, one keeping animals, and the other one an agriculture, uh, growing crops. Then the time came for harvest to bring to God. They understood who God is. Then what happened? Verse 3. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought an offering of the fruit of the ground to the Lord. Abel also brought of the firstlings of his flock and of, on, on their fat. And the Lord respected Abel and his offering. But he did not respect Cain and his offering. And Cain was very angry and he his countenance, that's his face, fell. So the Lord said to Cain, because the Lord knows our hearts. So the Lord said to Cain, why are you angry? And why has your countenance fallen? Verse 7, very important. If you do well, will you not be accepted? God was questioning Cain. Yes, you have brought these things, I know. But the intent, the intent of your heart is different. It's not good before me, like Abel. That's why I've respected Abel and I've blessed him because he gave from his heart and from good intentions and respected me as his God. Cain is so repenting. The Bible says he killed his brother, Abel. So God knows the intent of our hearts when giving him. You are saying God knows the intent of your coming here. God knows the intent of what you are, you are doing. God knows what is in your heart. He knows. And because God knows our intent, he appreciates and sometimes condemns. Like in Abel, he appreciates Abel's harvest, 
and warned Cain of his bad attitude. That is Cain and Abel. What about Abraham? How did God want Abraham to understand him? Genesis chapter 17 talks about Abraham who was chosen from a pagan nation and God called him out of his pagan nation, out of his pagan family to be a blessed person and through him a nation to come. And when God came to Abraham at one time, this is what God said to Abraham. Chapter 17 of Genesis, verse 1. God said to Abraham, when Abraham, when Abraham, before he became Abraham, when Abraham was 99 years old, when he was 99 years old, God came to Abraham when he was 75 years, the Bible says. But now God is revealing himself to Abraham again when he's 99 years old. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said to him, I am Almighty God, walk before me blameless. To Abraham he said, I am the Almighty God. Walk, walk before me blameless. God is saying to us, because we are new Israel, he is the Almighty who? God. Therefore, if the Almighty and we understand him as the Almighty, then we must walk before him blameless. What about Moses, whom he called to come and deliver the children of Israel from slavery in Egypt? Exodus chapter 3, verse 13 and 14. Moses talking with God, he was sending him back to Egypt, where he came from, after being has caused some havoc there. Now he's going back to Egypt to deliver the children of Israel from slavery. Then Moses wants to know who God is. That's why in chapter 13, verse 13 of chapter 3, Moses says this was to God. Verse 13, he says, Then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they say to me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? Praise God, you are sending me there. I can't refuse. But when those people tell me, ask me, who are you? What is your name? How can I tell them to know you? Verse 14, and God said to Moses, I am who I am. And he said, then you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. I want to use the same words of God. That through Reverend Karagaran and his team, I am has sent me Benoni to you today. That I am has sent me to you today. In this throughout this month, that I am has sent me. So whenever I be coming here this month, you know I am has sent Karuni here. As he sent Moses where? So I am has sent me. I loved you, my son. I am what? Has sent me. What about to the children of Israel? Verse 5. The, 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 uh, the, the verse is not there, but right. Exodus chapter 20, verse 1. Exodus chapter 20, verse 1. For that, number 5. How did God say to the children of Israel when they come from slavery on Mount Sinai, God is forming them into a nation a holy nation, and he wants them, he is going to teach them his rules, what, how they, what they are going to obey, then he's, going to, he's addressing them through Moses. Chapter 20, verse 1, God said these words. And God spoke all these words saying, I am 
the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. God wanted the Israelites to know that is the God who brought them out of bondage, who redeemed them from, from where they have been. God may be saying to you, do you know your journey? Do you know where you have come from? Do you know that where you are, God has been behind all that? Do you know that the job you have, God is behind it? Do you know that the life you have, God is behind it? Do you know that the family you have, God is behind it? That God who delivered the children of Israel is the same God who blesses us. If you know him, it's the God who blesses us. For me, God gave us four children and other many children who take care of them. It's God. What about you? To remember him as the God who has provided everything you have. As the God who has, who has helped you like that. There's a story. There's a story of a person. That story of a person, God showed him the, the walk. He showed him the walk. He could see Two, two feet, then another person could see four, another person could see two, 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 another person could see four feet. Another, then the man asked, why? Why do you see in my journey? In one place, I see, I, two, I see two feet. In another place, I see four. What is it? Then God told the man, you see, where you see two, you could you were walking, you, you could stand on your own. That's where you, you sit to. Where you see four, I was walking with you because that, but there you could not manage. I was walking with you. When I see that you can manage, you may you made alone and you walk. That's the two. Where you see four, I was holding you. Like that. At times where you see two, I was carrying you, my feet. At times where you sit to the feet. So then the, 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 the man said, Oh, in all my journey, God has been with me, has been lifting me, has been working with me. I must praise that God. You just take your journey. How many times has God walked with you? How many times God has lifted you up? How many times when you cried to God and God came in and had your prayers? How many times? You check your journey. When you check your journey, how many, I don't know how long, how many years you have. But if I check my journey in of six, eight years, I can't feel that it might have been my strength. It is God. <laughs> then, we we'll get examples of obedience. If God wants us to know him in, in many ways, why, how do we obey? They gave us an illustration of David. But before that, God commanded the Israelites many things. He gave them commands for worship. He gave them commands for how to live among themselves. Then he gave, he gave them commands of giving. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 16, talks about programmed giving. Programmed festivals. We have a God of programs. There are some people in this world, they have no program. We ask them, what are you going, what are you doing? Do you have a program? <laughs> oh, but you have a good program. You know how, to, how things are, are going to happen at certain times of the year, certain times of the day. Program. That's why he gave the Israelites the program of festivals. Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 16 says, three times a year, all your males, shall appear before the Lord in the place which he chooses. Why male? Male because by this time, there was only one place of worship, and it was only at Jerusalem. And the people had to come from many places, from Galilee, from Judea, from Samaria. It's like, if you say, we have one place of worship, all the saints on the millennium. And then there's a festival. People come from Bali, others from Kamoja, others from Kigezi, others from Ankole, others from where? 
to come to, to Kampala to for, for hospital. Only Mary could come to represent the families, the wives and children just at home. That's why I say Mary, who could just walk with things to come and represent the families. So by that time, only Mary's were supposed to go to Jerusalem for the festival. For he says, three times a year, all your males shall appear before the Lord in the place which he chooses. At the feast of unleavened bread, that is Passover, at the feast of weeks, which is the, the it was called weeks, is the harvest, and at the feast of tabernacle, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty handed. Sorry to disturb you. What is empty handed? Come again. What is empty handed? <laughs> With nothing in your hand. Empty handed. Who says, don't appear in that place empty what? Empty handed. So on trend, it will be trend what? The last, the, the harvest. 25th? Trend what? The last Sunday in this month it is the harvest. God is expecting people in this, in this parish, in this church to come not empty handed to come with something to praise God for what God has given them. Another thing God told those people, every man shall give as he is able according to the blessing of the Lord your God which he has given you. God is saying don't give what you don't have. You give according to the blessings I have given you. If I've given you much, you give. If medium, you give. If less, you give. According to the what he has blessed, because the God who has blessed you, He can't say, "Have given you this? You are, you are getting uh, uh, three hundred thousand shillings a month, and I expect you to give a million here." But if he's giving you uh, 5 million as, as your salary or, or 40 million, like that, then you expect them to give you 10 million. Or, I mean, 1,000. One, one, one because, because they're giving you much. So we have a God of justice. He sees you as you are. He sees you as you are. He counts your blessings. He counts what has given you and expecting you to, 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 to give back according to the blessings has given you. That's why some people amass wealth and the, and the wealth disappears. And just, where has it gone? <laughs> it's blown. So God says, give according to the measure he has given you. How many businesses do you have? Every business should be a harvest. How many businesses? How many contacts do you have? All those when you're giving God to God, you give. Let us get an example as we wind up. What example do we learn? The, the example of, of obedience. King David, King David, the reading we have read, First Corinthians, Chronicles, chapter 29. This time it is not harvest, it was not harvest. King David was preparing to build God's house. He was giving. It was not harvest time. But what he wants us to learn from this is the intent of his heart. What was in his heart when he was preparing for God's house? What was inside his heart? Because our God knows the intent of our hearts. What was the intent? Chapter 29, verse 3. This is what was in the heart of, of, of David. Verse 3 says, no, let me read from Verse 2, now for the house of my God, I have prepared with all my might. With all my might. Which other version says what? With all my power. It says, I have prepared for God with all my might, with all my power. And he mentions what he prepared. Then verse 3 says, moreover, because I have set my affection on the house of my God, I have given to the house of my God over and above all that I have prepared for the whole house. 
my own special special treasure of God. Said, I said, my affection, my love, on this house, where is your affection in life? Some people, their affection is not in church, somewhere else. That's why you may come to church and say, please, when, I, no, 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 I come to church on Christmas. Other days, I have other problems. Their affection is somewhere else. But for you, it has went today. Your affection is where? That's what you are here. Clap your hands to yourself. Your affection is here. Others are not, have not come. They don't bother. But for you, since you have come, it means your affection is where? Therefore, if your affection is here, don't allow the devil to disrupt your affection. Don't allow the devil. Because you are in God's house. Because you love him. Therefore, prepare. Because your affection is here. What did David say? David prayed a prayer after giving. Verse 10 of chapter verse 10 of chapter 29. David prayed like this. Verse 10. He says, Blessed are you, Lord God of Israel, our Father, forever and ever. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness, the power, and the glory the victory, and the majesty for all that is in heaven and earth is yours. Yours is the kingdom, O Lord, and you are exalted as the head of all. Both riches and honor come from you and you reign over all. In your hand is power and might. In your hand it is to make great and to give strength to all. Verse 13, now therefore our God, we thank you and praise your glorious name. But who am I and who my people that we should be able to offer so willingly as this? He prayed a prayer of thanksgiving. So from, the, from his heart, he poured everything because he understood who God is. The almighty, the mighty one, the provider, who everything belongs to him, power belongs to him, riches belongs to him, David, he was a king, but he prayed that everything you have given me is yours and you have returned to you. He prayed. Then he challenged the people. He challenged the people. Verse 5. He challenged the people by saying, Who then is willing to consecrate himself this day to the Lord? Then he said to his, to his subjects, who is the willing to consecrate himself? The word consecrate in Hebrew, hagios, means to set apart for God's purpose. To be set apart for God's use. So if God, David says, who is consecrating himself? As I'm saying, who is going to consecrate himself to be used for God's purpose? On that day. What was the response? The response of obedience is in chapter in verse 6. How did they respond when David, their leader, challenged them? When they saw David, their leader, offering, what was their response? Verse 6. Then the leaders of the fathers' houses, leaders of the tribes of Israel, the captains of the thousands and of hundreds, with their officers, over the king's work, offered willingly. They gave for the work of the house of God. They mentioned what they gave. They mentioned, they mentioned there. Then, verse 9, then the people rejoiced, for they had offered willingly. Because with a royal heart, they had offered willingly to the Lord. And the king David also rejoiced. He too. They responded positively. They responded. They rejoiced. They were very happy because they gave out of their heart willingly. How are you going to conclude? Conclusion. This summary. There are two bullets there. One, harvest festival is one of the set times of testing for obedience. 
we are on a test. God is going to see how obedient we are. I don't know how much Max is going to give you first, but it's a test. Because since it is a, it is a test, do you take sugar? Do you take sugar? How many kilos have you taken since January? <laughs> what about, about in your home, kilos of sugar? You just go home and count how many kilos you have bought since January in your home. Do you take bread, sweet bread or what? From, from a supermarket. How many loaves have we bought since, since January? You just go home and count. God is going to, to test whether the amount of loaves you have bought or kilo of sugar you have bought is equivalent to what you are going to give. But since God knows the intent of our hearts, Jesus made an, an illustration of this. Reverend Kalagala come. Jesus. Reverend Kalagala is going to be Jesus now. You st first stand there. You are going to perform like you are going to do some drama. Reverend Kalagala is now Jesus. He's, he, this is the temple where in, in now in Jerusalem. That time of Jesus, open Mark chapter 12. We are going to read the drama. St. Mark chapter 12. The Gospel of Mark chapter 12 verse verse 41. Mark 12, 41. I love you. You are going to read for us. I have, I have, opened, have you opened there? Oh, come, come. You are going to read what, when I say stop, then I, I, I direct him what to do. Where is another microphone? Let's read verse 41. The Gospel of Mark, uh, chapter 12, verse 41. Jesus sat down opposite the place where the offerings were put. Okay. Uh, Jesus sat opposite. The, why did Jesus yeah, sit, sit opposite this offering? S sit opposite the offering. Jesus sat opposite the offering. Why did Jesus this time sit opposite the offering? We want to find out why is Jesus... This time, he's sitting opposite the what? Offering, eh? And watched the crowd putting their money into the temple treasury. And he watched. I want the three people to come and be, be putting the money. You come. You come. You come. Let us, let us see, Magin, you're putting the money in there. Jesus is watching. You just watch them as they are putting the money. You look at them. Jesus watched them, putting the money there. Then after, many rich people threw him in large amounts. These rich people threw in large amount. The rich people. They, 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 they have seen here. They put their large amount. Yes. Read again. Continue. But but a poor widow came. A poor widow. Who wants to be a poor widow here? Who wants to come like a poor widow? Who wants to be like a poor widow to come to, to, to demonstrate? You demonstrate like a poor widow. Come, come. <laughs> walk like a poor widow like this. Walk like this. Walk like this. Walk like this. Let walk like this. Walk like this. Walk like this. Then you, you put the, the small coin. You put there. Put there. And then you go, you go back to the poor widow. <laughs> then going back, what do you, did you just say? Continue. Uh, 
but a poor widow came and put in two very small copper coins. Yes. Worth only a fraction of a penny. Yes. Calling his disciples to yes, him. Yes, calling his disciples. Yes, called his disciples. Peter, you, you come, come, come and see. I'm going to tell you a story. Come, come, come. Then, uh, tell his <laughs> disciples. <laughs> come, you be disciples. Je Jesus called his disciples to tell them the, what he has seen. What did, what did he tell them? Then Jesus said, yes, said, I tell you the truth. I tell you the truth. This poor widow, that poor widow has put more into the treasury than all the others. The, the others. Why? They, they all gave out of their wealth. Yeah. But she, out of her poverty, put in everything, all she had to live on. Okay, now you, go back. Now you see, Jesus knew the intent. <laughs> knew the what? He knew these poor, these, these rich people brought the balance. It's so like going to the supermarket here has got what? This jazz. Uh, jazz? Jazz. And then when you, when you go to jazz, when you go to jazz, you buy what? You buy yogurt, you buy what? Everything. Don't mind, you don't get annoyed. <laughs> 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 you, you buy everything, then the counter said now. What's the, uh, it's now 250. 220,000. Okay. And you have 300. You get from 300, you give. Then the balance is about to 60,000. Then you say, oh, there's a harvest. This balance, oh, they gave us an envelope. So uh, I, I put this in the envelope, we shall take on Sunday. That is the balance. <laughs> you have not prepared for the harvest, but you prepared for the supermarket. The balance you bring to church. Jesus, because he knew the intent, he said, now, these rich people, they have given much. This lady has given a little, but from her heart has given more than, because the, from her heart has given everything out of her heart, not the balance. How many times do we give balance to God? And you are not prepared for God. Sometimes, they, sometimes in the past, people were, were having and so you come at the bag of, of God. But when you get your money, you put money for, 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 for God, then money for other things. So when you come to church, you get money from the bag of God. But this time it's not there. So Jesus knew the intent of these rich people, knew the intent of this lady, and he blessed the lady, and he told the disciples. So, my dear friends, Jesus watches us. He's going to watch us. I pray for this harvest. He's going to watch you as you bless him, as you fear him. I wish you, I want to just to say, I wish you the best that you have to wear. I'm called Kanu Benuchitio, saved by the grace of God, retired but not tired, looking forward to be with Jesus forever. May God bless you. Hallelujah. The Lord deserves another mighty hand clap. May I invite us to stand up and we pray. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow commit yourself to the Lord as you make a reflection on the message that we have heard. Those who commit to following Jesus, do what he loves, obey him, they fear him, they see him above everything, they see him as their rock of ages, they see him as their foundation, they see him as their pro provider. And they bring repentance before, the, before him of what has not gone right. Father, what a challenge that you are leaving us with. And so we bring repentance before you, O oh God. 
many times we have prepared for birthdays, we have prepared for graduations, we have prepared for weddings and all that. But Lord, we forget to prepare for you. We even forget that you are coming back to take a church without a spot or a wrinkle. And we claim that you will understand. And we claim that you know. We bring repentance, oh God. That even when we know that harvest is coming, we don't prepare. Even when we know that tomorrow is Sunday, we prepare what we will dress, but we don't prepare what to give. Even when we enter here, we, don't, we, are not, we seem not to be prepared. Forgive us, Lord. Many times we have wrote balances. Have mass upon us, Lord. Yet all that we have, it is from you. Many times our intent of giving has been wrong because we want so and so to know. We want so and so to see. We want the ministers to know that we are powerful. Forgive us, Lord. Sometimes we claim to be poor and we give like the poor widow, but in the actual sense, we are not. And sometimes we don't give because we say, because, because, because. And we have become stingy. We have come empty-handed. Have mass upon us, Lord. Reveal yourself to us anew. As you did to Moses. You did to Abraham. You did to Israel. Have mass upon us, Lord. Help us to walk before you blameless. That when we come at the final end of our lives, we will come rejoicing. We will come ready to take the places you have prepared for us. Father, may we draw lessons from this. So that our coming here will not be in vain. Our hearing this word will not be in vain. Thank you for your servant that you have sent to us today. Bless him. Bless his ministry. May the word take root in us that we shall live it, we shall confess it, and you will bless us. Thank you even for what we are going to give right now because you know it. You know those of us who are giving from balance. You know those of us who have prepared. You know those of us who have not prepared. Accept us, Lord. And in your mercy, forgive us, Heavenly Father. Help us to harvest a blessing and not a curse. Restore us, O oh Lord. Restore our businesses, Lord. Some businesses have gone have been eaten by devourers because we have not done what is right. Teach us to do right. For a broken and contrite heart, Lord, you not despise. Thank you. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Big hand clap to the Lord God Almighty and the servant of the Lord that he has used to speak to us. We are now into a time of practicing what we have heard. May the Lord bless you because he loves a cheerful giver. And choir, graciously allow Israel to minister in one song. Graciously, after that song will come and pick it up. So Israel will be ministering as we give. Please find a basket next to you and drop in your offering. And Thanksgiving will be collected right here. So please you come and I will step a bit further so that I don't. The other time I was Jesus. I am now Kalagala so I will step. <laughs> I'll be blessed as Israel ministers to us. And I will step forward to collect the thanksgiving. Thank you. Praise the God Church. Good to be here again. I was here for like 10 years through all the different reverends, but I'm happy to see you. Though the church is a little bit small, we used to be so many, but we used to be out there. 
but we pray to God that all will be well in Jesus' name. I'm going to sing in Luganda. Uh, our, our song is a hymn to praise God so that we know that we are obeying God. We love him. If we are obeying God and we, are, we love him, then we must praise him. And the hymn and the title of that song is Echitibacho Chinene. I know the organist can, will give me an accompaniment as I sing. I'm going to sing it slowly so that we can listen to the words meaningfully. You will pick up the key as I move. Praise him. Echitibacho Chinene. Echitibacho Chinene.
very much. May the Lord bless you. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. It's a time of thanksgiving, and uh, it's time for us to say, yes, Lord. Thank you for your provision. Yes, Lord. Thank you for your sustainability. Yes, Lord. Thank you for your protection. Yes, Lord. Thank you for rescuing us. We don't know where we would be. Yes, Lord. There is a story behind us. Thank you for carrying us. Even when we thought you are not carrying us through, you were with us. Even where we see the feet and assume they are our feet, yet they are your feet carrying us on your shoulders. That you've never grown weary of us, oh God. Your hands are ever stretched out to receive us. Thank you, Abba Father. That even when the devil scatters us, you bring us together again. You gather us, O oh Lord. When our hearts are broken, you bind them, O oh Lord. When times of scarcity, Lord, you meet us and supply. And plenty comes and we forget about you. But your mercies and faithfulness are from everlasting to everlasting. Thank you, Abba Father. As individuals we are here, receive our thanksgiving. Receive our tithes. Receive our offerings. In obedience, Lord, we have come and we have given. We have heard the command, never to come before you empty-handed. Each one of us gathered here, we are representing our families and our obedience to you, Lord, may it be counted as a blessing to the families that we lead and the families we are representing here. Therefore, may you reach out to our places of work, reach out to our businesses, reach out to our studies, reach out to our life endeavors that we shall see you make us shine and cause us to burst into joy. Thank you, Lord. And our Lord, we present to you our needs and the needs of others. We pray that you look into our hearts and Father, meet with us Stretch out your hand and touch us. We thank you, Lord, and we bless your name. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I will request others to step back and request the family of uh, Le Canon Ken and Mrs. To, stay, to, to step forward here. They asked for a special prayer over them as a family. So those of you who are comfortable with kneeling, please kneel here. Those who are not, please keep standing. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of family. We have heard that your presence is right from our families and then carried out there wherever we go. Thank you, Lord, for this family, of the Dodul family. They are before you, Lord, with the hearts of gratitude for what you have been. Father Lord, we join them to say, Ebenezer, this far you have brought them. You have been their God from the beginning and you'll be their God to the very end. They began to, but see what you have done. 
We have heard that you told Abraham and said, See, Father, we are seeing, and your servants have seen what you have done, opening their womb and blessing them with children, blessing them with grandchildren, blessing them with a gift of education, gift of work, gift of ministry. Hallelujah to your holy name, O oh God. And the gift of love, causing them to pray together, causing them to minister in different ways. Thank you, Lord. Fulfilling your word that our children will be like arrows in the hands of a warrior. Continue making these your people like arrows in your hand. We continue to pray for them. You have blessed them in different destinations. We ask that they will be your effective ambassadors wherever they will go. That your light will shine before people there and they will see the good things that they do and continue to praise you, our Heavenly Father. We ask that you will lead their going and their coming. Father, that they will effectively represent you and lift your name high and higher above every other name. That they will never be ashamed to confess your Son, Jesus Christ, as their Lord and the Savior. Now we commend them to you, O Lord. For another couple of period, another couple of years of goodness, of faithfulness in ministry, in work, and in every way that people will see and will glorify your name, that they will eat the fruit of their labor. So Lord, protect them. We plead the blood of Jesus upon their lives, because that blood speaks better things than the blood of Abel. May that blood protect them. May that blood unite them to you. May that blood establish them in your covenant, O oh Lord. May you build a hedge of fire around them. And Lord, may you yourself be a wall of protection around them, around their relatives and friends, around their work. And may your Holy Spirit be a seal over their lives. And so friends, the Almighty God, who is able to do much more than we can imagine and ask for, who knows the secrets and desires of our hearts? Who knows the best for each one of you? I commend you. May the Lord keep watch over you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you. May the Lord look kindly upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord his peace fill your hearts and mind. In the knowledge and love of God and his son, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit rest upon you all as a family. May that blessing lead you always that you follow. May that blessing come after you, following you. And may that blessing surround you from now and always. Amen. We continue to pray as we prepare for Holy Communion. You sincerely repent of your sins, love your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life, keeping God's commandments, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to comfort you. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for giving us your Son to suffer and die on the cross for our salvation. As we receive the bread and the wine, the one Savior showed us, may to receive his body and his blood. The night he was betrayed, he took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat. This my body given out for you to restore it in memory. After supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, given out for you. Do so in memory of me. Together we say, 
O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Brethren, draw near with faith. May the body and blood of Jesus Christ preserve you.
Us, oh Lord, steadfast hearts, which no unwanted thoughts can drag downwards, and conquered hearts, which no unwanted purpose can tempt aside. Bestow on us also, Lord our God, understanding to know you, diligence to seek you, wisdom to find you, and a faithfulness that may finally embrace you through Jesus Christ. of God, which is greater than you can understand, be in your hearts and remain with you so that you may always know and love God and his son Jesus Christ our Lord. And may the blessed God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you this day and always. Go in the peace to love and serve the Lord. Praise the Lord. I thank you all for coming to this service. Sorry we overshot, but I hope we will find uh, mercy upon us. Any visitors in our midst, kindly stand up and welcome you. If you are praying with us for the first time, wow, wow, thank you. And the visitors in the gallery, thank you so much for coming. May the Lord richly bless you and keep coming. This is Church of Resurrection, Bugolobi, Church of Uganda.
three services every Sunday, 7.30, 3.30, and 11.30. When, if you are to go back, our love and greetings to those people that you stay with. Any birthdays, marriage anniversaries, we'd like to commend you to the Lord and also join you in the celebrations. Yeah, there is this one. You're also celebrating a birthday. Wow, wow, stand up, stand up. Wonderful, wonderful. May we bless these people? Oh, there's another one there. I is the Holy Spirit to remain over you and empower you and enable you to walk blameless before the Lord that you live to blow more candles and the Lord will continue to be your shepherd taking care of you as he leads you beside still waters and feeding you on green pastures. Praise the Lord. I, uh, I would like to ask to take note that the second, the third Sunday of this month, we will be doing the harvest for the children. The harvest for the children. So those of us who have the children, let's prepare for the children. Let us prepare the children to have them ce celebrate the, the, the harvest feast. And that Sunday, the children will worship with us as a way of mentoring them and it's a way of showing them what it is to harvest. So uh, help the children to prepare very well so that they earn a blessing and not a curse before the Lord. And then for us, our harvest will be on the 26th, which is the last Sunday of the month. The notices are many in the bulletin, and they have been running for some time. So I don't think I will repeat. Let me allow me to pick that which is new. And that is number eight. There are some vacancies at the diocesan secretariat. And the secretariat is looking for suitable people to take them up. So for details, please come to the office and we shall give you the details concerning those jobs. But take note, deadline is Friday 17th before five, Friday 17th, before 5 p.m. Uh, bereavement, our brother John Ezama, who is part of us, lost a mother yesterday. Some of you might have observed on the platforms, and some of you may not remember who he is, but uh, of late he has been the most active male warden at the back there, giving us the leaflets as we come in, uh, managing the, the congregation at the back there. And I think you realize that some gentleman has not today been in action. So he has traveled this morning to Arua to prepare for the funeral of the mother. He values our prayers and all our support. We prayed with him and prayed for him even in the previous services. We pray for him. Allow me to ask you also to look at the giving for last week, uh, for the last week, 23rd to 29th. Uh, thank you very much. May the Lord richly bless you for your generosity. Bands of marriage, the first band between uh, Robert Mpakani and Ruth Harway. Robert was in the first service, and uh, Ruth, I think, didn't manage to come, but we took it by faith that she's there, and we prayed for her. Amen. So the second time of asking, Christian Bagonza, Kamkama, and Josephine Mutavazi. Third time, Elon Natumanya, and Harriet Ka Kabarunji. Again, third time of asking, 
between Sam Wesigwa and Susan Mirembe. Anyone who knows the reason as to why these people shouldn't get married, bring it to us or else forever we hold our peace. There is a Christian book here uh, written by, uh, under on the title, The Power of Faith and the Prayer, written by James Emmanuel Mutumba and is a retired clergy. So support his ministry. It is outside there, and I'm told it is 20,000. And it's a book that you can read in half a week, and it is done. May God bless you. Once again, thank you, Canon. Uh, thank you, Israel. Thank you, choir. Thank you, every minister. Have a blessed week. Let us stand and sing as we go out to serve the Lord.